Hi, and welcome to the second part of this Feral Laser Scans in Wireless Navisworks video series. In this video, we're going to have a look at a few things. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is using section planes to interrogate the scan and model data. We're then going to look at taking measurements, and we're also going to have a look at navigating the scan data in the third person. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is section planes and measurements. First thing I'm going to do now is just go to my viewport tab and enable sectioning. And I'm going to use the fit selection tool just to bring the section box around the area of the scanner model. I've then just gone in and lifted plane number one up until it's above the actual scanner model itself. You'll notice if we grip these, these tools here we can move that around and we can drop that down. So as we just move this down we cut on a nice slice through the building at a level that we want to, to interrogate it at. What I'm now going to do is just bring in a separate section plane uh, below that and we're just going to bring that up to create essentially a slice through the data set itself. So I can obviously change the, change the depth of this and I'm just going to link these section planes together so that this, these two planes act as one we can then lift that through the building to find the area we want to look at in specific detail. So I'm just going to deselect the move command to get rid of that widget and just navigate around uh, and orient it to the top view so that we can zoom in here and have a bit of a look at this scan and model alignment. So if we just zoom around this particular column here and change my selection resolution to geometry just select this column and just move around this a little bit and have a look at how well the scan and model are aligned because the first thing we need to consider is are these aligned correctly is there an error in the actual alignment or do we have a well aligned scan and model however differences um, in the as built compared to the design model so if we just look at this column here which was the one we used to align the data I think in this instance the alignment's pretty pretty well well undertaken. However, we do have very slight differences between the actual as built data and the design model itself. So I'm just gonna go now and go back into my section tools and I'm going to uh, activate the second plane and I'm going to de-link these planes um, and I'm going to activate that second plane and drop that down so we can actually have a look at the entire data set below the area so we can get a better idea of what we're looking at and just zoom in on this wall now what we're going to do is we're just going to take a measurement to give us um, the exact dimension between the point cloud and the wall in this area so I'm going to go back into review and measure point to point and I'm going to go and lock the perpendicular um, direction or uh, function so that I'm just measuring now between two surfaces and that's locked so once I've done that I can convert that to a red line and as you can see in the viewports that's saved viewport which I can rename and anytime I want to navigate back to this particular measurement I can do that just by double clicking on it in the save viewports section which will take me back to that view. So we're just going to do the same process now but with the vertical section tools um, in order to create a vertical slice. So I go back into my section tools and turn off plane 1. I'm just going to activate plane 3 um, which is default into the front of the building. Now you can see this is not aligned properly against the surface so what we're going to actually have to do is go into this um, settings and align it to a surface. So I'm just going to zoom in now on the actual model itself and let's use this bit of clad in between the windows. Click align surface and click on that and you can see the section planes then align to it. So we now need to obviously create a second plane. So if I bring in plane 4, which is to fall into the rear of the building, again, which isn't aligned properly, if I just navigate inside the building slightly here, I'm just going to use the same function, and I'm going to align it to a surface, and I'm going to use the back of this 
bit of uh, steel or clad in there and what we can then do is we can obviously again change the depth of that section so we can make a nice thin section um, so that we can really interrogate how well these are um, aligned and what differences we've got between the as built and the model. So then we can just drag that through the building and we can find a nice area that we want to look at in more detail. So once I've found an area I want to focus on specifically, and I can zoom in on it now, and you can see in this particular area what we have is we have the ceiling slightly below the design ceiling. However, the finished floor level above is actually a little bit higher than the uh, design finished floor level. So I'm just going to change my selection resolution to geometry again and have a little bit of a navigate around so I can square this up. And again, I'm just going to use those measurement tools to take a perpendicular measurement between the design ceiling and the um, as-built ceiling as it's been scanned. So now we're just going to click on the review tab, measure point to point, we're going to lock the perpendicular uh, axis and we're going to zoom in on this now and take a measurement from the ceiling or from the scan ceiling to the design ceiling. As you can see that is locked along that plane, or along that surface. Just select that there, we've got 79mm and we convert that to a red line and we'll just change the view name for uh, later review. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is navigating the scan in the third person view. In order to do this, I actually have the um, the uh, civils or uh, the concrete model loaded in the background because some of the uh, gravity functions won't work unless we actually have geometry. So I'll just unhide the RCP file there and we're just going to zoom into the main foyer area. So now we're in here I'm just going to go into my um, walk and activate my walk command and I'm just going to turn on third person and I'm just going to bring this guy up a little bit so he's in a round about the right place. If I just go back into my settings there and turn on gravity as I move forward you'll see that the guy just drops down to actually uh, walk on the the model surface itself. So what we can do now is just navigate around the model and look for any noise and things. So you can see we've got quite a lot of noise there off some mirrors that were in the toilets, which really would need cleaning out of the model, or the scan, sorry. And we can uh, just navigate around here and do a bit of a remote inspection. What we could do, we could um, turn the model on as well if we wanted to um, and save the view viewpoints as they are so that we could uh, actually highlight things or do a sort of remote, remote as-built inspection as it were. Um, but if I just take the guy up the stairs here, we'll have a look on the first floor. This is also good for uh, looking at clearances and things and how, how well people can circulate around the building. But if we just go and change the, uh, the view to uh, look around, so we can actually have a bit of a look around from this guy's perspective. So there we are, we can actually stand in a spot and visualize how this avatar or a person in this building would see um, the surrounding area.